steps. That will, in fact, take probably many hours to complete. But let me just go over the symbology of the movie 2001 quickly with you, and then we will go back to the very beginning, to the first primitive human, probably sitting on his haunches, munching upon some vegetable, watching the sunrise in the east. In the beginning of the movie 2001, most people who sat in the theater were struck by the imagery which was presented to them, as they saw first a dark and gray and ugly world. And as that world began to move down from the center of the screen, they saw behind it a moon. And as the moon began to come down with the world that was sinking to the lower part of the screen, behind it you saw the emergence of the sun. What you were witnessing was an eclipse of the sun, partial eclipse, and if the light from the sun spilled across the edge of the moon, it took the shape of the boat of Isis. And the sun, of course, for anyone who has studied the Osirian cycle, became Osiris. And the symbology was Osiris riding across the heavens upon the boat of Isis. Now this will all have much deeper meaning to you as we progress toward your education in the ancient mystery schools, which are today known by many different names, and we will get to some of those names as we go along. This signified, of course, the creation of the universe and of the world. And what we saw next was a barren plain, nothing growing, barren rocks, barren desert. And then we saw the sun begin to rise in the east over the horizon, signifying the birth of the world. As the sun traveled across the heavens, we saw the wind begin to move across the face of the earth, signifying that something was happening. Then as the sun began to reach its zenith on a prime longitude, we began to see shrubs. Small green plants began to emerge. Now the sun traveling across the heavens did not, of course, signify a day. It signified an age. An age, dear listeners. Hey, what can I do? As the sun sank deeper into the afternoon, we saw the emergence of animal life. Birds. We could hear the birds singing. We could see the animals. And then we could see primitive. Primitive man in the form of an ape. Mingling amongst the animals, neither harming the other, living in a state of innocence. And you saw a man only eating plants and roots. And you saw that even when the animals and man were in competition for food, no one was injured or hurt, but there was a display of waving of arms and yelling and grunting until one or the other moved away. The significance of this was the age of innocence, when man lived in the Garden of Eden, innocent. With the animals, it was a vegetarian. And as the sun progressed farther toward the west, we saw man begin to retreat into the womb. Well, you see, the passage of the sun across the sky from the time it rose in the east, signifying the birth of the world, we saw that as it reached its zenith, its most powerful aspect in the heavens, life began to emerge first in the form of plants and then animal life. And that the animals and early man lived in harmony together in a state of innocence. This was the symbology of the movie. During this process, you saw a rock formation in the shape of the male organ, the penis. This was the symbol of the mystery schools of the generative force of creation. When you watch the movie again, pay attention to the symbology of the movie. Now the sun begins to sink even farther in the west. Man, in his little tribe, goes to the water hole and confronts another group of primitive man, all in the form of the ape. And there's a confrontation. But you notice that no one was injured or killed. There was a lot of waving of arms, jumping up and down, grunting, screaming, screeching until the group that was at the watering hole and had already quenched their thirst moved away. And then the new group moved in. And then they scurried 
into the womb, signified by the cave. And there was more symbology there, as they all sat in the darkness with their eyes open in fear. And one of the female apes held a child to her breast. And you were seeing men in the transformation from ape to human. Primitive man evolving to the point where he could think. And then what happened in the movie, toward the dawn, you heard the humming of bees, millions of bees. And the beehive and bees were a prominent symbol in the mystery schools. It signifies societal cohesion, industry. Now, not industry as you may know it, in the manufacture of cars, but industry in working together in a societal form. In this case, the very basic rudiments of society. And as the sun again began to rise up in the east, signifying the dawn of the new man, the audience beheld an obelisk, a monolith. In front of the cave are the womb from which the apes emerged. It appeared that the humming of the bees was emanating from this block of stone. Now notice I said three words, monolith, obelisk, and stone. All of these are significant symbols in the ancient mystery religions. And you saw that this was not God, because creation had already taken place. The world had been created. Plants and animals had been created, and primitive man existed on the earth before this monolith, this obelisk, this stone ever made its appearance. It is also known as the stone that you saw earlier, the generative force or the penis. Now don't get all confused by this terminology. It will begin to make sense to you as we go along. It took me many years of study to understand what I am now imparting to you. You watched as the apes milled about in great excitement, and one encouraged by another, signifying Adam and Eve, the one encouraging with the symbol of Eve, the one being encouraged was Adam, until he actually reached out and touched the face of the stone, and he was imparted intellect. You could tell that something significant had happened because the tone in the general volume of music changed at that point. And then the other apes began to touch and rub the statue. Now most people that I knew attributed what happened to some extraterrestrial force. And they were receiving the exoteric interpretation, or that which is meant for the profane, those who are not illumined and cannot understand what it is they are seeing. But for the initiated, what they witnessed was the creation of the world by God, and the impartation of knowledge to man, the forbidden knowledge, by Lucifer through his agent, Satan. For in the religion of the mystery schools, they believe that man was held prisoner in the Garden of Eden by an unjust and vindictive God, and that man was not told by this unjust and vindictive God that he could have the same powers. And man was set free from the bonds of ignorance by Lucifer through his agent Satan, and many believe that the two are the same, and that's okay because maybe they are. And that through the gift of intellect, man himself will become God. But for those of you who understand what I am imparting to you now, you may not even have to listen any farther, for it explains everything that has ever happened in the history of man, and everything that is happening now, and all that is to happen in the future. As it progressed, you saw the first primitive man form the first original thought with the use of the gift of intellect. When he squatted in the dust and picked up a bone and flopped the bone over and saw it hit a rib and the rib flew up into the air and he looked at it and he flopped it over to the other side and hit another piece of rib bone and flew up into the air and you could see the wheels turning in the mind of this primitive individual. As he lifted the thigh bone 
and then struck down in front of him and watched bones fly. And then he struck again and again, and then he crushed the skull of the dead animal that was lying in front of him. And you notice that the portrayal of this was absolutely accurate, because the next thing that happened was that this new gift, this intellect, and this original thought led to the murder yeah. of another primitive human being. In this case, of the tribe that had not been given the gift of intellect, did not have the ability to use a bone as a weapon because they had not made the connection. And you watched in the symbology of that movie the murder of Abel by his brother Cain. And you watched as he threw the bone up into the air, and the progression of the use of the gift of intellect led you to a space station spinning around the Earth. And then the story began of man's journey toward illumination. And everything in that movie was a symbol for something else. Now the audience sitting, who are what the adepts or the initiates call profane, did not understand what they saw. They thought that it was really about a journey into space by an astronaut, or a group of astronauts, and the bad things that happened to some of them and one survived, and none of them understood the significance of the obelisks, monoliths, one on the moon, one in orbit around Jupiter, and the ultimate transformation of the astronaut into a giant fetus floating in space. And to tell you the truth, when I first saw the movie, I didn't really understand it either, but I knew that there was something of such import there that I needed to know. But I never stopped studying until I found out. And of course, one discovery leads to another. And every time I answered a question, a hundred more popped up. Until I reached a point, dear listeners, where I realized that if I studied for the entire rest of my life, there is not enough time in my life to learn what it is that I need to know. But I have learned enough along the way to impart some of my knowledge to you, and maybe you can help me find the ultimate truth that all of us, all of us, ultimately learn to look for. Although not all of us ever realize that we are looking, and most of us never even understand what it is that we are looking for, but some of us do understand that we are looking. The adepts of the initiates of the priesthood of the mystery school believe that they have found it and that they know all of these things, and I'm not really sure that they do. Because in my search and my ultimate illumination, <laughs> and yes, I have become, to a degree, illumined, illuminated, I have discovered that I am more illuminated than most of those who have gone through the process of initiation in the mystery schools and believe that they know more than I do, and it's not true. I have surpassed them by so far. And they believe that they are so far ahead. But it has become difficult for me to place myself in any kind of logical progression along a path that I am following and I know not where it will ultimately lead. But I know that many have been misled along this path and are worshipping the fallen angel that we know as Lucifer. Many believe that Lucifer and Satan are the same. Many people believe that they are totally different entities and that Satan is evil and Lucifer is not. But Lucifer rebelled against God, according to the Bible, and was expelled from heaven and flung to the earth to be the master of the material world, the master of the earth. Now, if Lucifer is indeed Satan, how this transformation took place, I am not wise enough to know. If they are different, then I have not yet discovered where Satan came from. If Lucifer is not Satan. Now, there are people who have professed to know the answers to these questions and have sat down and we've talked for hours. And I still am not sure that they are right or that they are wrong. I'm still looking for the answer to that question, but I do know this. Ancient man witnessed something that he described in his oral history and in his writings. And it could probably be called the first UFO sighting in the history of the world. 
How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning star? Now notice, Lucifer was called the son of the morning star. It was also called the morning star. And there is a great mystery here. Because Christ also called himself the morning star. And how all that fits together. I do not know, but I have been told by those who have been initiated in mystery schools that Christ and Lucifer are one and the same being. However, I cannot bring myself to believe that. What you believe, of course, is your own business and is not my intention to make you believe anything, but rather to impart to you what I have learned over many, many years of study into the secrets of those who worship the ancient mystery religions in secret for thousands of years. For you see, that monkey who sat there squatting